Why are you cleaning? Reasons relating to sanitation. Insanity. One of Lucy's teachers is coming by. A little late for a parent-teacher conference. Okay. Why? I don't know. Wants to offer her condolences, I suppose. She was there, wasn't she? She was teaching the English class that Lucy left to go to the bathroom. Anyone else in the class? No, he didn't make it into that classroom. It's not Mrs. Riley. I think so, Joanna Riley. So obviously your parents can't see her right now, which means I have to do it. I'll do it. You're not dressed. That's okay, I'll do it. She was my teacher too in high school. Okay then, thanks. Sorry, I rang the bell, but... It's okay. Uh, sorry. Sam? Um, uh, hi, Mrs. Riley. Sam, it's good to see you. Um, you can sit. I just wanted to offer my condolences to your parents. Lucy was an amazing girl. My parents are kind of indisposed at the moment. Your mom's staying in town then? Staying in the guest room until whenever, I guess. How are you doing? Honestly, pretty fucking terrible. But according to my therapist, we're right on schedule with the grief timeline. Your what? Uh, well, she probably didn't say that. But basically, she thinks that our grief right now is directly proportionate to our loss or something. I see. How are you doing? Okay, thanks for asking. When does the school reopen? Monday. I won't be there. I'm taking a leave of absence. As you might imagine, I'm not the only one. Yeah. My sister wasn't an amazing girl. She was just a girl. You're an English teacher. You of all people should be placing more value on actual definitions of words. I, I loved my sister like crazy, but she was a 17 year old high school senior living in a Boston suburb, not knowing shit about shit. <laughs> never having done shit. She was just a kid. She wasn't amazing. You sure about that? When was the last time you were amazed? Does this door lock from the outside? What? No. Sorry. Hello. What the hell? I'm stronger than you. Like how you are. I'm gonna go. What is happening? Mom, come on, stop. You're insane. I should be the one running from you. And yet, I don't know how you do it, the way you turn everything around. Somehow, I'm the one chasing after you on the attack. You attacked me. I approached you with a conversation topic. You accosted me. You verbally assaulted me. Did I? Mark my words. If you take me down, I'm taking you down with me. What is happening here? <clears throat> they also ask that any political agendas arising from the death of Lucy Kincaid be kept at bay out of respect for the family's bereavement. Okay. See? Okay. How dare you try to work a political angle into our daughter's death? Margot, that is the opposite of what it says. By mentioning it at all, you are inviting it. I'm simply asking that people refrain from using my daughter's death to be- Oh their God, enough. Enough. I really wasn't trying to- I know. I know, I'm sorry. I need to be angry. Yeah. I'll probably keep doing that. Okay. I'm angry at you right now, even. 
For what? For showing me compassion. I can stop. No. <clears throat> we'll need to do something about dinner. Pizza. Chinese. Okay, Mexican. I'm going into the office tomorrow. I don't know, maybe not for long, but. All right. Laura is going back to the show on Monday. Right. You could go I'm back. Not. Okay. Okay. If she orders Mexican, I'm going to stick her hand into a bowl of warm water in the middle of the night. What were you fighting about? About fighting. Fighting about fighting. Because why should divorce be any different than marriage? Is this still a good idea? All of us living here? Maybe it's better if we grieve with a little space from time to time. I need all of you here. I need you all close. Okay. She's ordering Chinese. Oh, I should forget the crab rangoon. She always does. Here's what I recommend about being murdered. The sympathy, the rage, the tears in your honor, the inability to remember why you walked into a room, and of course, the regret. You spend a whole 17 years wishing life was all about you. Turns out, all you have to do is die. What I don't recommend is having to relive what came before while having to watch what comes next. Truth is, I can think of better ways to pass the afterlife. And I realized for the first time that like, we can choose our friends. I mean, yes, we have to love our neighbors and all that, get along, follow the golden rule. And I'm all about that but actual friendships? I don't need to be friends with everybody. Just because we're all roaming around the same school for seven hours a day, five days a week, doesn't mean I have to let all of these people into my life. Without even knowing it, I had been operating under the assumption that high school is like family. You're stuck with them and you have to forge these intimate relationships, whether you want to or not, but you totally don't. Nobody has to be all up in my business unless I want them to be. I'm in control. Isn't that dope? I'm impressed, Lucy. Honestly, I am too. I just feel so free, you know? It takes most people a lifetime to come to that same conclusion. I'm advanced. Yes, you are. I might even start again, like start fresh. Cut off all my friends, sever all ties, take like a week or a month off from meaningful human interaction and then come back and really consider who I want in my life. It's like when people do that test to see, their, to see if they're allergic to gluten, they give up like everything and then slowly start to add different types of foods back into their diet to see which foods upset them or whatever. And then they know what they're actually allergic to. I'm going to do that with people. Your friends might not take kindly to that. Well, that's part of the point, right? Anyone who doesn't take kindly to that can suck it. I'm clearly not meant to be friends with them. If that's what you feel you need to do. Hello? Oh yes, mom is going to get this. Outside. Mom, oh my God, so listen to this. Hello, Margo. Colin, Laura. Margo, nice to see you. I'm giving up friends. Can I at least have a drink first? What can I get you? Sit, I'll get it. Friends are like gluten. Am I going to like where this is headed? Actually, I think you might. Everything is a choice. Everything we do is a choice. I think we like totally underestimate that or forget about it. We get caught up in whatever and just go with the flow. We don't ask questions. 
So I'm reevaluating my situation to make sure I am totally cognizant of everything that's happening to me and everything I'm doing. Nothing's going to get past me now. No word, no action, no feeling, no emotion. Everything has to go through me first, get approved or denied, like a personal veto process. So right now I'm feeling accomplished, approved, a little overwhelmed, denied, totally proud of myself, approved. What do you think? Oh, are you asking me? Yes, mom. Well, I don't know. I think you might possibly be in treacherous emotional territory, but I admire your gumption and the intent behind it. Okay, good enough. What do you think, Dad? I think Lucy's old enough to make her own decisions. Yeah, that's like the whole point. Step mommy? I think it's brilliant. Are we all eating here tonight? I'm cooking. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I bought accoutrements and everything. I went to the grocery store. Margot, we've discussed this. Your complaining in my general direction is not a discussion, Colin, though it did make up about 90% of our marriage. Let her cook, sweetheart. Fine, under your supervision. Mm, I am not moving from this chair for at least another half hour. Why don't you supervise me, Chef Ramsay? All I wanted was a relaxing night at home. Everyone is relaxed, but you. All right, I'll take a Valium and meet you in the kitchen. I'm going to text all my friends and tell them not to call me. Where did you come in from today? Milan. Visiting Antonio? No. Called it quits again? And for good. So what brings you back? <laughs> My children. So what brings you back? Some kind of fashion podcast, I don't know. I'm supposed to speak, do some PR. I see. And I have nothing to promote. Everyone has something to promote. I've been thinking of retiring. <laughs> Guys. Taylor is already doing it. She is already doing the gluten-free friends thing. Now I have to come up with something else. Ugh. That's not what I think it is. The dress I designed for Lucy's graduation. Margot. It's the closest I'm going to get to actually working for a while longer. So I'd like if you'd just let me have this. How was the office? Uncomfortable for everyone. Yes, I'm sure. I have to make an appearance at a benefit tomorrow night. You don't have to do anything. I organized it. You personally? Well, my office. Laura's leaving for LA in the morning, so I think I'll ask Sam to come with me. I'll go with you. No. Why? I'll go. Sam has been been watching Six Feet Under for four days straight like some magnificent cliche. You'd be so lucky to have me. I don't think my staff will go for it, Margot. What the hell do I care? You really want to go? I'll wear something from my new line. My staff will be thrilled. Bereaved Mother Model's latest design. Money in the bank. Is going alone an option? Not really. Well, you're not taking Sam. We're not putting her through that. So you're taking me. What are we benefiting? The Second Amendment Foundation. I have to be clear that my policies haven't changed. They haven't. They haven't? No. You can't go to this. Afraid I'll make a scene? You should make a scene. This is a legal organization. It is. Do you have any idea what will happen if you go to this benefit? You'll tear my limbs off? I'm not talking about me. I'm not making a speech. I'm not speaking to the press. It's not about me. I'm just making an appearance. Ha! I hope you're not planning on running for re-election. from the office of U.S. Senator Colin R. Kincaid, Boston, Massachusetts, date. It is with great sadness that we confirm the news of the passing of Senator Kincaid's 17-year-old daughter, Lucy. Lucy was one of eight students tragically killed in the Gloucester High School shooting on Tuesday. 
She was wounded in several places and passed away later that day at Mass General Hospital of a brain hemorrhage. Lucy is survived by her parents, Colin Kincaid and Margot Lennon Kincaid, her stepmother, Laura Randall and older sister, Samantha. Senator Kincaid and his family kindly ask your consideration of their privacy during this time of grief. They also ask that any political agendas arising from the death of Lucy Kincaid be kept at bay out of respect for the family's bereavement. None of the other kids got their own press release. They were lumped together as a number in headlines across the country, 17 dead. Not me. My face is now the face of school shootings everywhere. My face will be in the dictionary next to AK-47. That stupid school picture from junior year, me with the giant black head in my chin crease, those gross bangs I thought would ease the impact of my giant forehead squinting ever so slightly because I refused to get the glasses I needed and I was too squeamish for contacts. The personification of America's gradual deterioration, the symbol of our great divide. Toothy Lucy Kincaid, who only grew into her nose last year. Do you remember when you first heard the word trend? Why would I remember that? Trying to puzzle out when the use of the word trend became a, well, trend. You're a fashion designer. Isn't that what fashion designer does for, you know, a living? Not a good fashion designer. A good fashion designer is ahead of the trends, creates the trends. That still seems to involve trends. I just worry that Lucy is too seized by the notion. Of trending? I don't know. Are you staying tonight? I thought I would, on the off chance I'll see Samantha. Sorry about that. She's your daughter, not your ward. And your daughter. I'm going to bed. I won't be long. Do what you want. I'm taking the Ambien. Good. We're going to get drunk and stay up all night. Prank phone call half of Congress. Fantastic. Good night. Night, honey. Good night. All right, where's your phone? What? We're not prank calling Congress on my phone. You haven't mentioned Antonio all night. He does not bear mentioning at the moment or ever again. What happened this time? What happened is I never liked him. You never liked me. Exactly. Okay. Anyway, that's not true. I liked you fine. I just couldn't live with you. Margo, you can't live with anyone. That's why I thought my situation with Antonio was such perfection. We saw each other only when circumstances permitted or when the mood struck us. That's my ideal relationship. How ideal can it be if it's over? Actually, that's my ideal relationship. No relationship. Yes, how about that? How about it? <gasps> oh, well, 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 look who decided- Too tired, please. No lecture. Where did you go? To the opera. I found a ticket on the sidewalk in Chinatown and I'd never seen an opera before. And what did you think? I think there's a reason why I'd never seen an opera before. I'm lying, I cried. <laughs> well, that's a start. But it was four hours long, so now I'm going to bed forever. Seems extreme. Don't judge me. Judgment's not our style. <laughs> <laughs> it's surprisingly difficult to be mad at your child for going to the opera. It's possible we've been played. I'm always impressed when she simply shows up. When did she stop despising us? She never really did. It was just for show to get our attention. Really? That's what Laura thinks. Then I suppose it must be true. At this point, I'm inclined to think that more than half of their past issues they created themselves just for attention. Do you mind if we don't go there tonight? Fine by me. Sorry about Antonio. You are not. Sorry for him, at least. I'm going to bed. All right. See you in the morning. Night. Honey, you're on the floor. Yeah. 
How did you get there? Combination of gravity and grief, I think. Am I doing this all wrong? Doing what? It's only been two weeks. But it should be getting easier. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not yet. Sometimes I can't see. I, like it's not an inability to see, but an absence of things to see. I, I was gonna make breakfast this morning. I think that maybe the intention of making breakfast is a step in the right direction. First intentions, then execution. I'm taking Margo to the benefit tonight. I know. I'm not even convinced you should go, let alone take- I need a little normal. Well, sure, honey, but- I'm still me. Okay, honey. I can't be changed. Well, that's kind of a horrifying notion. I just mean... Uh, I don't think that makes any sense. I don't think it can be true. And I don't know why you would want it to be. But I have to go. I love you. Don't hurt yourself trying to stay the same. Honestly, Samantha, I just think, how many bad decisions can one person make before the age of 26? And 27. You know, here's the thing, Sam, here's the thing. You actually haven't made any decisions. Okay. You know we support you, honey. Yeah, that's super clear. We want you to be happy, but you're stalling. You're procrastinating. I have a lot of interests. I'm a passionately eclectic person. Sure, and starting down a path doesn't mean you have to tread the same path forever, but you can't spend all your time hanging out in the fork in the room. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Dad. We think you're brilliant. You excel at so many things, and that's why it's so tragic that you're coasting like this. I'm just living, Dad. Just doing the whole day-to-day -day thing that everyone does. That is not what everyone does. Unsuccessful people live day-to-day. -day. You need to do something. Yeah, part of this is on us. We shouldn't have let you change majors so many times. We also didn't want to squelch your spirit. We trusted you. We believe in you. We believe in your ability to get to know yourself. That said, you're kind of a commitment foe. Okay. You're inspired by so many things, Samantha, which is wonderful, but you're dabbling and you're only three short years away from 30 and dabbling is not suitable for 30 and up. They're really sporadic. You know, the moments in which you guys actually choose to parent. Sam. I hear you. Okay, I know this is my life, you guys. You can't make decisions lightly. You can't make any decisions at all. <laughs> I don't want to fuck it up. You can't fuck it up, Sam. Just bet on something. Bet on yourself. Nothing you do is permanent. Except getting pregnant and keeping the baby. Everything else is fixable. That's the thing. I don't want to make decisions that need to be fixed. I just want to make the right ones to begin with. <laughs> Well, at least write a book. If you're going to do nothing, at least write a book about it like everyone else does. Now that's a good idea. If you're going to just eat, pray, live day by day. Write a book about your journey. That is exactly what's wrong with my generation. You want me to write a book about doing nothing. At least then you'd be doing something while you're doing nothing. Can I go now? Lots of millennials can relate. And that's all millennials seem to want to do, relate to things. Not do things per se, but relate to them. I'm going. Thanks for the pep talk. See you next year when you decide to parent again. She's really hung up on this whole parent as a verb thing, isn't she? As if it's a thing you do and not just something you are. 
<laughs> that was the day I actually died. Gloucester High was filled with screaming teenagers, blood on the walls, bullets piercing the air, and they were drinking mimosas at 11 a.m. on a Thursday. My American Girl dolls. Son of a bitch. What's happening? Working from home. Margo and I took Sam out for brunch this morning. The rest of the day seemed like a wash. How was your morning? I'm going to quit. You're not gonna quit. Never should have taken the job in the first place. Then quit. You care if I quit? I care if you're happy. I've been unhappy in this job for four years. I just think the novelty of hosting a morning show is finally worn off. What was I thinking? You were thinking you could use a break, and you thought this job might be exactly that. It's not. I know. And now you know. So quit. And do what? Whatever you want. We could move to Spain. I still have a job. Right. Well, there's like a 40% chance you'll get reelected next year anyway. Thank you. How this state has elected a Republican senator two terms in a row, I'll never understand. Very little about the great state of Massachusetts can be understood with a mind. So I've learned. Margot's still here? In the city, doing our podcast thing, taking a train to New York later this afternoon, I think. So she won't be staying tonight? No, she's in New York, then LA, then London, maybe. Who knows? I don't think we'll be seeing her for a bit. Hmm. It's Lucy's school. Oh, shit. I have three missed calls. My phone's been on silent. Hello? Yes, but wait, no, wait, hold on. Call Margo. Wait, what? Call Margo. This is insane. You're all insane. You're all the reason America will never be great. My skin crawls just looking at you. You, especially you. Are you a farmer? Do you own a cattle ranch? Are you a cop? Then what the fuck do you need a fucking gun for? Oh, right, yes, okay, you like to hunt for sport. That's fine, it's fine that thousands of innocent people are senselessly murdered each year so that you can hunt fucking pheasant once in a while. And you? You want to be able to protect your family from possible intruders? What a big man you are. What a big, strong, alpha bullshit patriarch. My 17-year-old daughter is dead because you refuse to acknowledge fucking reason. This is just a room full of the most selfish people that have ever walked the goddamn earth. Every one of you is a murderer. Every single one of you is complicit. The deranged kid who shot my daughter in the head is dead at his own hand, but you're all here. You should be charged for his crimes. How many kids have to die before you get over yourselves? I know what it is. I know what it is. You don't want to have to admit you were wrong. You don't want to have to say, oh, yeah, this whole right to bear arms thing is actually pretty low on the totem pole of things that actually matter. Sorry about that. God forbid your pride be wounded. But guns don't kill, people do, right? So you're off the hook. Fuck you. 
I hope you all die a miserable, agonizing, flesh ripping, blood gushing, slow, slow, slow fucking death and spend eternity burning in the white hot fires of everlasting hell until every inch of your body is charred to the marrow because then and only then will you come just the tiniest bit close to knowing what it feels like to have your child taken from you at the hands of a 16 year old kid with an AK-47. But please. By all means, keep the champagne flowing. give a shit that you're mad at me yeah i got that but there is a fight to be had here and i insist upon having it waste of time you already know what i'm gonna say and i know what you'll say do you disagree with me with what you with what i said yes i do how in the name of god is that possible i believe in the constitution marco oh my god Tell me, please, tell me that you are that, that you are just so blinded by grief that you cannot see reason. This is how I felt pre-grief. This is how I feel mid-grief. And this is how I'll feel post-grief. This is how I feel me as a person all the time. Ah! This is it. This is what it is. This is the horrific truth and eternal question of my awful agonizing life. How can you love someone so much and simultaneously want to stab them with a knife and drag the blade through their flesh until you're both swimming in the blood? Why is it necessary that I have only half a heart now because I gave the other half to you and still I try to see inside your brain and try to understand how you can feel the way you feel and, and how I can still feel the way I feel about you knowing that you feel the way you feel about the world. Right now, I could scream again, cry, throw up, tear off one of my own limbs, and it won't change anything about who you are. You, you are a fundamentally certifiable person, and you have no capacity for logic or reason or conversely, even empathy or emotional intelligence. You cannot have those things and think the way you do. I know you so well, and still I can never understand the things that I know, and that's never going to go away. And it eats at me, it gnaws on my bones, it chews up my internal organs, one or two in particular, and there will never ever be a solution for it. Your child is dead because of what you believe, Colin. Your political views have murdered her and there's no change in you. You are as ever unmoved and I will set myself on fire before I ever accept that. You think I am unmoved, Margo? You think I'm unaffected? That it's easy for me to wake up in the morning and at night I fall asleep without the help of pharmaceuticals? You think I simply go on as before? I have spent every day since Lucy's death feeling like I have nothing to offer. Nothing to give to anyone, to myself, and no ability to receive either. Yes, Colin, you're a shell of a person. Congratulations, you grieve your daughter. I wish I could change my beliefs, Margo. But that's not how beliefs work. Not when they are real and steadfast, deep and considered and understood and felt. For some people, beliefs work like love. They are unconditional. If Lucy had killed her fellow students, I would still love her. And if, as you say, my beliefs killed Lucy, one more word, I swear to God, I, I swear to anything but God maybe, and I will tear through your flesh and rip out your intestines and drape them over the fireplace like holly at Christmas. Yeah, well, so there's that.
Mom? It's late. It's 10.30. It's child late. It's not 17 late. I just want to talk to you about my graduation dress. You cannot change your mind anymore, Lucy. The design is finalized. I just want to change the color. To what? Mauve. Mauve. Yeah. Why? It brings out my eyes. Who told you that? I told me that. I suppose it would. And if you could take it up half an inch? No. Nope. But- uh, No. Fine. Can you stay through the weekend? I have to be in New York tomorrow afternoon. Could you come after? If you like. Cool. I thought we could see a movie. You know I don't do movies. There's a new documentary about Edith Head. Oh, all right then. Okay, night. Good night, Lucy. It's actually harder to talk to the people who were there that day. I find myself comparing our reactions. Who's the saddest? Who's the most broken? Who can barely get through a sentence? It's like some sinister PTSD game show where everyone loses. Yeah, I know. I look at my mom and dad and I'm like, well, that's one way to grieve, I guess. I'll just be over here mainlining potato skins. When they look at me, I feel like they're saying, looks like Sam's found yet another reason to not get a damn job. I'll get a damn job when Lucy can get a damn job. So never. Lucy was my job for a while. When she was born, I was 10. I decided that she was my responsibility. She was my baby. Better than an American Girl doll. And as far as my parents were concerned, I was better than a nanny. I channeled all of my preteen anxiety into taking care of her. Anytime my parents actually attempted to parent, I would step in and take matters into my own hands. I needed her. I needed to be in control of her. That's kind of sweet, actually. It probably was for a while. But then my parents divorced and I went off to college. Lucy was eight. She would call me all the time. She had no idea how to handle it. And God knows mom and dad weren't much help. But I didn't want to handle it all. So eventually I just stopped answering the phone. And I just sent her little, everything's going to be okay text. Pictures of dogs and hats. Bad karaoke videos on YouTube. <laughs> After a while, she stopped texting me or I stopped responding. I can't remember. I, I really wasn't a very good sister from that point on. Our age difference stopped being cute and started being annoying. <laughs> and she was still so tethered to our parents while all I wanted to do was distance myself from them. Now Lucy's gone and we're all rotting away together in the same house. <laughs> Lucy wrote a poem about you in my class. It was called, What Not To Do With Your Life. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, she's not wrong. I am the prime example of that. Although I like to think I start out strong, I just kind of fizzle after that. When people say you don't know the first thing about blah, blah, I laugh because I know the first thing about everything. I don't know the second, third, fourth, whatever, but I do know the first. The first thing about me is I know the first thing about everything. The first thing about my sister was how much she wanted. The first thing about my stepmother is how quickly she gives up. And the first thing about my parents is how much they hate to love being in love with each other, but they do. Lucy died because she was in the wrong place at the wrong time, which is how I've felt my entire life. 
She died because our government is full of right-wing hacks like my father. She also died because she had to go to the bathroom in the middle of English class because she had gym first period and downed about 64 ounces of water during class because she chose volleyball that semester because she just found out our mother played volleyball in junior high because our mother decided to come home the weekend before the semester started because she and my father got drunk and swapped stories of youth at the dinner table because my stepmother was on location in Atlanta. Lucy died because Lucy died. And we all have to blame each other because we're all we have. And we all have to rely on each other to survive it because we're all we have. And we all have to ruin each other's fucking lives because we're all we have. I forget about dancing. That it exists? And I can do it. You certainly can. People who dance are single people or married people. I am neither. Because you've been sleeping with a Spaniard on and off for the better part of six years? Divorced people aren't necessarily the same as single people. Fair enough. I haven't thought about Lucy in a while. Five minutes. That's a while. Yeah. I loathe you. Loathe you too. Do you feel guilty? About what? About Laura. Mm. Yes, I suppose. You suppose? Margot, this is the first I felt like a person in two weeks. I'm so relieved I haven't found room for guilt. Me too. And I want to kill you. I understand. You've learned new things. So have you. Strange, isn't it? To have sex with other people and then go back to having sex with a person you had sex with for 25 straight years? Yes. Yes. 26 years. Was it? It was. You were always very good in bed. As were you. As are you. Well, yes. I think that goes without saying. Why? Look at me. There are plenty of beautiful people who are no good at sex. How would you know? Laura? She's fine. I want wine for this. How many women did you sleep with in between me and Laura? Four or five. And you chose Laura, who is only fine at sex? I didn't marry her for her sexual skill and prowess. Obviously. There are other reasons to marry a person. Really? I wish someone had told me that before I married you. You're all heart, aren't you? How many men have you been with outside of Antonio? Hundreds. Six. Six? Is that a high number? Any number is a high number in this case, I think. You were with four or five outside of Laura. There's no difference, really. I'm a Republican senator. I have to sleep with interns and personal trainers and all that. It's what's expected. You never got caught sexting, at least. I don't understand what's sexy about sexting. How I managed to keep from doing this to you for eight years is beyond me. We both managed quite well because we hated each other so much. And with that hate came great respect. You respected my life without you and I respected yours. Stop talking about respect. 10 minutes since we thought of Lucy. I don't know any more about that than they do really. I don't have any special insight. I can't tell you if heaven exists. My specter seems to come and go at will and my mind with it. One minute I exist, the next minute I don't. And then suddenly I'm here again. 
watching them walk into the walls they've created for themselves. I don't know if they're doing it right. I have nothing to compare it to. All of my grandparents were dead before I was born. Death never really touched me until it stole me away. And now maybe I'm haunting them, but I hope fucking not. Jesus, life was bad enough. But I also have no sense of the future. It doesn't exist for me. I mean, literally, of course it doesn't exist for me. Nothing exists for me, but even now I don't have any concept of what comes next. I only understand that days are passing because I watch days pass for them. I'm not sure I have days of my own now. The only time I have is their time. Maybe if someone else in my family dies, I'll evaporate and they'll take over. I wonder who I took over for. Grandmother I never knew. Rest in peace at long damn last, Grandma. At some point, in a minute or two probably, I'll go away again, to nowhere. A black hole in my mind, and then I'll be back again, probably, in this stupid fucking yard, to bear witness to who knows what, for who knows why. And then poof, back into this ether. This could go on forever, but I'll never know because I have no idea what forever is. Has it been forever yet? How about now? I've started to think, well, the more I'm here, the less I'm alone, but Still just me here, and maybe you. The Boston Globe, front page headline, ex-wife of morning Republican Senator takes down the gun lobby. Friday evening, the Second Amendment Foundation held their annual benefit in Boston the event was organized by the officer of Senator Colin R. Kincaid, Republican from Massachusetts, who less than two weeks ago lost a 17-year-old daughter in the Gloucester High School mass shooting. Kincaid was joined at the soiree by his former wife, fashion designer, Margot Lennon Kincaid, also the mother of his departed daughter. Halfway through the event's festivities, Lennon Kincaid made her way up to the stage and proceeded to harangue the event's attendees and presumably the gun lobby as a whole. Her remarks are printed below, edited only for coarse language. This is insane. You're all insane. You're all the reason America will never be great. My skin crawls just looking at you. You, especially you. Are you a farmer? Do you own a cattle ranch? Are you a cop? Then what the redacted do you need a redacted gun for? Oh, right, yes, okay. You like to hunt for sport. That's fine. It's fine that thousands of innocent people are senselessly murdered each year so that you can hunt redacted pheasant once in a while. And you, you wanna be able to protect your family from possible intruders? What a big man you are. What a big, strong alpha redacted patriarch. My 17 year old daughter is dead because you refuse to acknowledge redacted reason. This is just a room full of the most selfish people that have ever walked the redacted earth. Every one of you is a murderer. Every single one of you is complicit. The deranged kid who shot my daughter in the stomach is dead at this own hand, but you're all here. You should be charged for his crimes. How many kids have to die before you get over yourselves? I know what it is. You don't wanna to have to admit you are wrong. You don't wanna to have to say, uh, yeah, this whole right to bear arms thing is actually pretty low on the totem pole of things that actually matter. Sorry about that. God forbid your pride be wounded, but guns don't kill, people do, right? So you're off the hook, redacted you. I hope you all die a miserable, agonizing, flesh ripping, blood gushing, slow, 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 redacted death. And spend eternity burning in the white hot fires of everlasting hell until every inch of your body is charred to the marrow. Because then and only then, Will you come just the tiniest bit close to knowing what it feels like to have your child taken away from you at the hands of a 16 year old kid with an AK-47? But please, by all means, keep the champagne flowing. At the time of this printing, Senator Kincaid's office could not be reached for comment. What are you doing? DNA testing. I got a 23andMe. Like genealogy? 
What for? Miss Reen did it and found out she's like one fourth Italian, like Catholic as shit. Her parents were pissed. You trying to piss off mom and dad? Don't have to try. So why are you doing something your ex-girlfriend did? Because I heard an ad on a podcast and it reminded me of it. Don't you have a job interview today? Yeah. What time? Noon. You should finish getting ready if you're going to catch the train into the city. Not sure if I'm going. Because this DNA thing is more important? Because I have a fucking master's degree, I shouldn't have to be somebody's assistant. Sam, you have a degree in sculpture. How the hell do you expect to make money? What, are you going to get like a business degree or something? I don't know, maybe. At least put something on those. I like them plain. Waffles are just a vessel for things that are bad for you. That's the whole point. Ugh, gross. You should go do your hair. You should go suck my dick. I'm supposed to hear from Sarah Lawrence today. Please don't be a fucking business major if you get into Sarah Lawrence. Don't tell mom and dad, okay? If I don't get in, I don't want to have to like talk about it. Is mom still coming today? Yeah, I think. She wants to cook dinner. Ugh. Will you go to BU if you don't get anywhere else? If I don't get anywhere, yeah. But I better fucking get in somewhere else. Bryn Morris at the end of the week. Bryn Moore. Well, we all can't get into freaking Stanford. Sorry. Nazarene's back teaching there now, right? I can give you a ride to the train station if you can finish getting ready and like... Ready. You'll be late for school. So what? You don't want to have to pay for parking and I don't want to have to give Nina a ride to school again. You used to be friends. She's a sophomore. Seniors aren't friends with sophomores. Okay, fine. I'll put this stuff away so dad doesn't find it. Go get ready. Thanks. Go. Hard to the marrow. Yep. He didn't try to stop her? He's terrified of her. He's always been terrified of her. How do I keep this off the show tomorrow? <sighs> How's the temperature around here? Uh, Not good, I bet. You could say that. Well, here's the thing. She's right, of course. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hard to argue her sentiments. But the party's gonna hang Colin out to dry. Can you hang someone out to dry two weeks after their daughter was murdered? But this, this couldn't be more scathing. Go big or go home, I guess. How are you doing? I'm okay. It's been, you know, weird around here. I'm sure. Where is he? She? They? Either of them? Uh, the city. Mom's going into the office. Dad went with her. He did? First day back at work. They are pretty reliant on each other these days for support. Makes sense, I guess. I can never understand what he's feeling quite the way she can. Did you hear about dad's plan to arm teachers? I started volunteering for this like gun control advocacy group, mostly just making posters and stuff. They needed some artwork and maybe a new logo or something. That's great, Sam. Yeah, I think they want me to go out canvassing with them this weekend. There's a vote coming up trying to raise the legal ownership age to 21. I think I'm gonna go. I think you should. Yeah? Does it make you feel better? It makes me feel useful. Useful can feel a lot like better. 
gets me out of the house at least. And those American Girl dolls in the yard? Oh, I'm still gonna melt the shit out of them. Just gotta figure out into what. Okay. You should probably call dad. Hey. Hey. Didn't expect you back so early. Margo was fine once she took the plunge. No sense in me waiting around for her. Nice of you to tag along though for support. How, what are you doing? Writing out thank you cards, you know, for the casseroles and flowers and all that stuff. I don't think you have to do that. Well, it's oddly restorative. Feels a little like moving forward. Moving forward from what? Moving toward healing. So the benefit. Hmm? Oh, yeah. What are you gonna do about that? I don't know. What should I be doing about that? You? On the show. Well, you can't comment, obviously, but if Matt wants to talk about it, he can talk about it, just not with you next to it. Okay, but do you- Listen, we need to talk about something. The memorial. What? At Lucy's school, they're honoring the victims. I'm not going to that. Laura, I- I, I think we should. I have to talk to you. It will be glaringly obvious if we aren't there. And more importantly, I think it'll be cathartic. And the whole family- Margo and I have started sleeping together. Again. What? You slept together while you were married, I assume. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Sorry. No, I'm not sorry, but yes, I hear you. Can I explain? That's why I paused, so that you might, you know, speak. Are you okay? I'm fine. Speak. You don't seem... Speak! Well, speaking of catharsis... Oh, fuck off. I'll try again. I'm sorry, Laura. I'm sorry. This is a uniquely human situation, and... What? What? What does uniquely human mean? I don't know. I wish I could describe it more accurately in more detail. I would not like more detail, thank you. I need her right now, Laura. It's an extraordinary circumstance. It isn't, it, it doesn't feel like cheating. Okay. It feels very separate. From me? Yes. It's a void you could not possibly fill, and that's not your fault. And it doesn't make me love you less. It's just something very specific, something that I can only get from Margot. And- Started sleeping together. Mm -hmm. You said started sleeping together, not slept together. Well, yes. You didn't sleep with her once. No. It's. Ongoing. Yes. You want to keep sleeping together. Yes. You're telling me this so I can give you permission to do so. Well, not exactly, but I guess in a way. I wish this made less sense to me. Look, I understand that this is unorthodox. I understand that this is coming as a surprise to you and you're not quite prepared to respond as yet, but... You want to stay married to me and keep fucking your ex-wife while we're all living in the same house. Just for now? Until... Until know, what? Until we're... Healed? Until you fixed each other? Until you're suddenly over Lucy's death? Tell me something. How would this work exactly. I am broken, Laura. 
and only Margot can put you back together. You're mocking me. I don't know. I'm going to bed. It's 4.30. Yeah. You should finish these. Headline. M.A. Senator publicly condones ex-wife's condemnation of gun lobby while maintaining his support of it. I deeply regret any pain and anxiety that my former wife's words may have caused that evening. Both Margot and I have been under a great deal of stress lately following the death of our daughter, daughter Lucy, and we are still deep in mourning for our loss. As a result, there were many emotions in play the evening of the benefit, and Margot surprised all of us and herself by channeling those emotions into a deeply disturbing and difficult speech. These are the actions of a grieving mother, and I, being a grieving father, cannot fault her for them. That said, I maintain my support of the gun lobby and opposition to stricter gun control laws. I do not, in fact, believe that more regulation is the answer to our sorrows of late. I apologize heartedly to the Second Amendment Foundation for the aberration and thank them for their continued support and advocacy of this issue. Oh, she's gonna love this. I've never seen so many people except like the Women's March. This was exponentially less than the Women's March, but it's a start. You realize you're definitely about to become a meme, right? A meme. Hot couture at an anti-gun rally? Total meme status. Everybody's got to have a gimmick. Will you come to the one in Springfield next week? Oh, Samantha, I don't know. These sorts of things aren't really my bag. But uh, I went once, I lent my support and my name, but this is yours. You clearly have a knack for it. A knack for what? For giving a fuck? For putting your time and your energy where your mouth is. I'm afraid activism simply isn't my style. Yeah, okay, whatever you say. Can I fix you one? No, thank you. It's not fair that I can't be mad at you. You can be mad at me. Your child was just violently murdered. You can be mad at me, Laura. No, I can't. You spent more time with Lucy in the last five years than I did. Don't think I don't know that. Laura, stay. What? You should stay. Stay here? After all, this is only temporary. What kind of masochist would I have to be to stay? You're grieving Lucy as much as the rest of us. You shouldn't have to do it alone just because... You need him, don't you? Your show, your image. It won't take long for the press to get wind of your swanky new hotel digs. Why on earth would you want me to stay? This is the family Lucy left behind. This is what's left. All of us. He has guns in the house, you know. Not for long. It's different. Being married to a Republican and being married to a Republican senator. I know. That's why I left him. It takes a certain amount of stoicism, of faith. Faith in what? In the belief that he is good. Sometimes I think I'd feel better if I killed him in his sleep. But I don't think I could sleep without him right now. If I stay, then what? I think if you stay, we all might stand a chance. Worth a shot. I kept meaning to come by and see how you were doing, but... Me too. With you, I mean. I should have come by sooner, but I didn't want to. You know, burden you. But you feel like you had to talk if you didn't want to talk. Because I get that. Yeah. Casseroles are better than having to talk to people, honestly. Most people. Pretty much everyone, yeah. 
I saw you on TV though, at the rally in Boston. Oh yeah, I've been working with this apathy group and- I know. It's a really cool organization. And if I can lend a face to their mission, people know who I am because of my parents and if it helps at all, especially with this bill they're trying to get passed. I know what you're doing. And everyone at school is really grateful, I guess. Excited. Maybe they're relieved that someone is doing something. Seems like no one is ever doing anything. And you have their support. And I know that one person is not going to bring the walls tumbling down. But I spend most of my every day feeling like I'm going to explode or implode or dissolve into particles. And I'm supposed to journal it out. But you're Lucy's sister, and I feel like I should be able to tell Lucy's sister that I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it will help. It's just going to stir the pot and rile people up and pit people against each other and be a headline. But then what? What actually changes? Guns are never going to go away. Even if you do it little by little, law by law, guns exist. And you can't will them out of existence. As long as one person on earth knows how to make them, millions of people will be able to get them somehow. And if they have to work harder to do it, they'll just work harder to do it. We're learning about prohibition in social studies. It's just like that. You tell someone they can't have something. They just want it more. I don't even want to drink, really. But the fact that I can't makes me want to do it. These shooters, like Patrick, weren't gun enthusiasts. They didn't grab hold of their guns because they like guns. They did it because they're sick, because they're sad, they're hurt, they're outside of themselves. Only they didn't know it, and neither did anybody else. And I don't know why that is. It's a 21st century. Everybody has a therapist. So why didn't anyone see it? Why wasn't anybody looking for it? Because they're always the victims of two totally extreme reactions from those around them. A kid shows some big, deep emotion, and it's either made a huge deal of or completely brushed aside. And we don't respond to either of those responses. We rebel against both because we just want to be treated like people, like real people who aren't quite adults, but who feel things that are real, things that are wild and difficult and nameless. We don't totally know how to know our own minds, but we have our own minds. We're given these fucked up brains and no one asks us for a license to use them. We're just stuck with them. Some of us make it out okay by the grace of something and some of us don't. Why isn't mental health what we're talking about? Why isn't anyone trying to help us? I'm sorry. I don't have anything to say. Except I really do not want to be here anymore. Imagine my disappointment when I emerge from the shower only to find the bed cold and empty. You forget we're different that way. You need a shower after and I need fresh air. You had this on the whole time. Oh, I guess I must have. That probably explains whatever I'm feeling here. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. You can't resist drawing blood, can you? So maybe we won't wear diamonds to bed anymore. Men grow cold as girls grow old, and we all lose our charms in the end. I don't want to sleep in Laura's bed anymore. What happened to our bed? You set it on fire, don't you remember? Ah, yes. People talk about watching their marriages go up in flames. Talk is cheap. And action is expensive. As is divorce. As are brand new beds. Do you ever think about how things might have been different had you not decided to run for office? More than I care to admit. Would we still be together? 
We're together now. Would we still be together without one dead child? We won't be together for long, you know. I know. Why? Because, my love, you had to go and get hitched to someone else. And if I got unhitched? No. Marco. No, Colin. There may come a time when a lass needs a lawyer. <laughs> there may come a time when a hard-boiled employer thinks you're awful nice. But get that ice or else no dice. God, I love you. God, I love you so much. Your diamond slice a path down my back and I love you. You're as glacial as you are scorching, and I love you. You literally torch my bed, and I love you. I don't know what else there is for me to do. Anyone who says they're in love and walks away twice is a liar. And they said it would never last. <laughs> Still loathe you. Listen, cat's out of the bag, baby. You admitted you still loved me quite fiercely back when you were monologuing about ripping a knife through my flesh and setting yourself on fire. I do. I do too. Laura Stain. Here? In the basement. Why? Because this is her home, Colin. Hey, kid. Corn? Yep. How was your day? Boring. Want some tea? No, thanks. Who was on the show today? I made hot jambalaya with Emerald and had an intimate chat with Tony Shaloub. Who's Tony Shaloub? Oh. If you never answer me when I ask who someone is, how am I ever supposed to know? Google. I'm never going to Google Tony Shalhoub. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Did you hear from BU today? No. You were supposed to hear from BU today. Nothing. What was on the laptop? Porn. Lucy. I got in. Well, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks. Well, you don't seem pleased. It was my safety. UMass was your safety. I didn't apply to UMass. So where did that $110 for your UMass application go? Chanel Monet concert. I wanted BU to be my safety. Why didn't you just tell us that? Because you guys wanted me to be more cautious. Well, there's nothing wrong with being cautious. Mom told me to only apply to schools that I actually want to go to. Your mother is not cautious. Not cautious and a massive success. Yes, well, it works for some people. It'll work for me. Maybe. It will. I take after mom, Sam takes after dad. What? All right. You don't think so? I've honestly never thought about it before now. I'm supposed to hear from Bryn Mawr tomorrow. Still sent on Bryn Mawr, are you? It's where mom went. But is it right for you? You and dad just want me to be closer to home. We're that transparent, huh? You sure you don't want some tea? Mom's coming tonight. Ah, oh, then I shall need a drink instead. Extraordinary turn of events. Another mass shooting at Gloucester High School this afternoon. Around 1.15, the shooter, a 15 year old girl whose identity has not yet been confirmed, entered the school cafeteria and opened fire. Three students were killed instantly and 12 more injured and in critical condition. The victims appear to have been targeted. The shooter then exited into the hallway and was taken down by two teachers with handguns who shot her once in the shoulder and in the kneecap just before law enforcement entered the scene. This marks the second mass shooting in Gloucester High School in the last 30 days. Are you surprised?
What are you doing? Modeling the bereaved mother collection. Hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but automatics trump shovels every time. I dare you to point that gun at me. I dare you. Would now be a good time to boast about how the plan works? What plan? Arming teachers. The plan works, Margot. There are eight dead teenagers in a cafeteria. The plan does not work. There could have been more. Christ, you are the only person in the world who could find a silver lining in a mass shooting. You want to bury the guns? Bury the guns. I want you to tell me right now how your life would be different without these in the house. Go ahead. Tell me what would change. Well, I'd had nothing to go hunting with. Tragic. I have no way of defending myself against intruders. In the 25 years you have lived in this house, name one time you have defended yourself against an intruder or needed to. That's not the point. So you keep telling me. But what I'm hearing is eight kids died this afternoon so that on the off chance you decide to go hunting one day, you'd be good to go. Do you really want to keep having this argument? No, Colin, I don't. But apparently I have to because it keeps happening. Two teachers, one of them female, by the way, saved an entire school today with the handguns in their bottom desk drawers. No, eight children are now dead, seven are still in critical condition, and two teachers were forced to shoot at their own student. That's what happened today. All right, fine. Let's see what this does. You think this is going to help? Fine. I'm not the one shooting up high schools. You're also not the one doing a damn thing to help these kids. Bury them. Now bury the rest. That's all I have. That's right. Now bury the rest. But I thought you weren't going back at all. I wasn't. Then I was approached by your father's office. But not my father. A few people on his staff. And they convinced you. I don't know how. Well, you were in a vulnerable state. I'd never held a gun in my life. They trained you? A few sessions. And you kept it in your desk. In a locked drawer. I didn't think I'd ever have to do it. I didn't think lightning would strike twice in the same place. I fumbled around for five minutes trying to find the key and fit it into the lock and open a drawer, hoping someone else would get there first, one of the other teachers. Chuck and I got there at the same time. I don't think I could have done it if he hadn't been there. I would have just stood there gotten shot. She was in my freshman English class. She wrote a beautiful paper on To Kill a Mockingbird just last week. Has she said anything yet? No, I don't know. They're not going to tell me anyway. Did they ask every teacher at the school? I don't know. I think so. And how many said yes? I don't know. I hate him. You don't. Why not? Why can't I? Why shouldn't I? If he was just my senator and not my father, I would hate him. Well, he is your father, so that's just too bad. People hate their fathers. Plenty of people. You don't. My mother got him to bury his guns last night. Here? Right over there. I took a video from my bedroom window. You took a video? On my phone. You know what, you could. Yeah. For three years, my sister dated a girl named Nazarene. She was Iranian, smart as fuck. 
and took no prisoners. She's the reason I learned what that phrase meant. For my mother could think of no other way to describe her. Nazarene was so driven that Sam got caught in her wake, swept up in whatever Nazarene focused her attentions on. And eventually her own thoughts and feelings melted away to make room for her girlfriends. Then Nazarene dumped Sam because she thought she was too apathetic. I can't wait for her to read the Boston Globe this week. And late last night, the 20 something daughter of a Republican Senator began a hashtag movement. Hashtag bury the rest went viral after Samantha Kincaid, daughter of Colin Kincaid, posted a video on YouTube of her father burying all of his household guns in the backyard while her mother watched. The Kincaids lost their daughter Lucy a little over a month ago in the first Gloucester High School shooting. Since then, Senator Kincaid has maintained his support of the gun lobby, even in the midst of his own grief. Senator Kincaid's office has yet to comment on this video and whether or not the Senator has suddenly reversed his position on gun control. But in the video's wake, there have already been hundreds of videos of these firearm burials across the country and even internationally. What? Looking at me. You're in a communal space, Lucy. When one has headphones on, one is clearly having a private moment. Since when do you listen to Queen? I think it's going to be our graduation song. Graduation song? It's a thing. I've got one for you. Dad, that's my phone. Dad. It's oh. a great song. It's old. So is Queen. But Queen is cool. Starship is cool. Okay, Starship's not cool. But this song is arguably better. Okay, fine, I'll leave you alone. Hey, Dad? Yeah, kid? If the school asks you to be our graduation speaker, I need you to say no, okay? Is that on the table? No, because you're gonna say no. Why? Because it's embarrassing to have your father talk in front of the whole school? I mean, yeah, but that's not why. We can't have like a Republican sending us off into our destinies. A good number of your friend's parents voted me into office, I'll have you know. Then go talk to them. Well, to be fair, graduation is really more for the parents anyway. Dad, say no. I'm good at my job, Lucy. Yeah, but like, good for who? Republican is not synonymous with evil. I know. What is it? Do you want to put women in jail who get abortions? What? I don't understand the point of making it illegal. Will there be cops investigating illicit abortioning? Are you in trouble for performing an abortion or getting one? Will you put the doctors in jail or the women? Nobody's going to jail. So they'll pay a fine. Lucy, are you pregnant? Ooh, dad, no. But if I did get an abortion, would you arrest me? The idea is that you wouldn't be able to get one in the first place. When has prohibiting something ever worked? Tell that to the gun control groups. Yeah, this is why I don't want you to speak at graduation. Fine. Okay. You don't think gun control can work? Or you just don't want it to? I think this country fought an entire revolution against tyranny once. And there's no guarantee it won't ever happen again. Like the Boston Tea Party part two? Like if our government ever found itself in the wrong hands. You mean like if there were more good guys with guns than bad guys with guns? Exactly. Licensed, trained, responsible gun owners have the power to stop those who threaten our freedom, our democracy, our safety. As long as guns are going to exist, and they're always going to exist, our best defense is knowing how to use them. 
Would you teach me? I thought you were canvassing with the other volunteers today. I passed. You passed. Laura is basically laundry at this point. Do you get that? Do you, do you get that you've ruined a marriage? That like whatever stability this family managed to achieve after your divorce is just totally disintegrated. This is stability. This is what we have now. <laughs> Treating Laura as a side piece slash housemaid is what we have now. Are you that fucking deluded? Laura's been here, mom, for five years. While you've been jet setting all over the globe, Laura's been here trying to create something normal. And then you and dad go off and use Lucy's death as an excuse to relieve all of your stupid sexual tension, giving no thought whatsoever to how it might impact the people around you. What you're doing is no longer grief. What you're doing is selfish and cruel and wildly removed from reality. And so your response is to throw away all the hard work you've been doing to get the bill passed so you can sit around here binge watching yourself to death? So what? As long as I don't get in your way, what the hell do you care? I will not allow you to waste away here. If I could waste away somewhere else, I would. Now you listen to me, you spoiled little thing. You listen. Humans make mistakes. Humans do terrible things. That does not make them terrible people. It makes them, shockingly enough, human. We fuck up. We lose our minds. We are none of us safe from ourselves. Do you understand? You cannot know what insanity will plague you. You cannot know when or why, but it will, it will. And you will struggle. You will violently struggle to explain what you have done and you will come up short because there is not a reason for everything. There is too much uncertainty in human nature for us to hold a grudge forever, to assign blame and refuse to forgive. The most frightening thing in all of life is that we cannot always control ourselves. We like to think we're in control, perhaps. Our only solace is in thinking that at least, at least we are in control of our own thoughts and feelings and actions, but that is not true. We are at the mercy of something we can never understand, and the best we can do is hope for the compassion of those around us. I am your mother, and you will forgive me because it is in your best interest to do so. I promise you, my darling, you cannot fathom at this point in time just how exhausting it would be to spend your entire life hating me. And I do not want that for you. Do you think Lucy forgave me before she died? What on earth could she have to forgive you for? I've never had any idea how forgiveness works. I understand the meaning of the word. I understand what it's supposed to look like, but I couldn't tell you if I've ever actually done it. I've moved on from things. Is that forgiveness? I've raged about things until I was too tired to rage anymore. Is that forgiveness? I've given up. Is that forgiveness? I think maybe we're all just people were people for some of us. We try things, we suck at things, we have no idea what to do about things, but we can't stop things. As much as I might hate someone, I'll still have to see them tomorrow. And maybe I'll handle it okay, or maybe I'll handle it badly, and maybe I'll hurt someone, and maybe I'll hurt myself. Maybe I didn't think it through enough. Or maybe I thought it through as much as I possibly could have in the moment. I have to keep making decisions, whether they're the right ones or not, because life doesn't pause for you to figure it out. It keeps hurtling things at you without any regard for what you already have on your plate. I don't think I knew any of this when I was alive. Maybe I did and I never got around to knowing that I knew it. I don't believe I'm actually any smarter now that I'm dead. I don't suddenly understand the meaning of life. I don't know what the point of me getting murdered was or why my childhood best friend and neighbor became a murderer. 
I honestly don't even fucking know if she was wrong to murder. I think maybe in death, I have even less of a sense of right and wrong. Maybe that's just because the one thing I recognize, the one thing I'm certain I can see now that I couldn't see it before is that no one will ever know what it's like to be somebody else. But I think it's okay to try. Good evening, Laura. Nice night. If we're all going to live together, we're going to have to get better at this. I need to make a few calls. It's always a few calls, isn't it? Never just one, never 35, a few. Busy yet approachable. A man of the people. He thinks we're doing this for him, you know. Who are you doing this for? Myself. You? Myself. Funny when selfishness looks so much like benevolence. I think the more socially acceptable answer would be for Lucy. There is no socially acceptable answer, and Lucy is dead. Is dad here? In his office, I imagine. On his first of a few calls. Dad! Dad! Samantha! Dad! What on earth is going on? You killed it. What? Killed what? McNamara. McNamara voted yes on the last three gun control bills to come across his desk. What did you have on him? Good old Bradford McNamara has had his eye on my Senate seat for the last six years running. He's been putting off a congressional bid on the off chance that- Are you kidding me? On the off chance that I might abdicate. Are you kidding me? Now seemed as good a time as ever. You traded your US Senate seat for a no vote on a local gun control bill? That's right. He votes tonight. I call off my re-election bid and pass the torch. The video gave you too much of an edge. Sorry. Why? Why is this local bill so important to you? Because my beliefs are important to me, Margot. And if I cave on this, people are watching. It may just be a state issue, but people are paying attention. What do you care? You've already bartered away your Senate seat. Oh, I see. You've set your sights higher. The American people need to see that I'm a strong leader, that I'm not going to let my personal trauma impact my ability to do what's right for this country. It's more important now than ever that I show up, stand firm. Speak softly, carry a big stick. Fight the good fight. Sounds like a campaign slogan if ever I heard one. I'm going to bed. If, if he runs, this country is... Not just this country. This. There's one left, you know. Where? I'm gonna go meet some people to work on social media strategies for the next bill. I'll see you later. See you later. Margo. Go inside. 
go inside, Laura. I swear this has been the longest day. Should we just order from Angelo's? You kept it in Lucy's room. Only after she was gone, I, I figured it was the last place she would look. It was. Look, uh, okay. I know when I'm beat. We'll bury it right now, come on. No need. For years, I've wondered what it would take. What would need to happen for the gun lobby to understand what is so stark and clear to the rest of us? If not dead children, then what? If not their own dead children, then what? Reason and logic have failed. Compassion and empathy have failed. The only thing left is to use their own weapons against them. Margo, drop the gun. Margo, drop the gun. Mm -hmm. 